there was OSU got co- out coached, out played. Lucas Raymond is also from Sweden, so he's an eight time goal scorer for one of those two games they have in Sweden. So I don't know which one it is, but it's going to be one of the two. Right. So lock that. This doesn't make any sense. Okay. Fumble recovery happened. I'm going to be honest. I turned off the game. I checked back in. That was the final. Be back here, baby. Hey, Come on. on. <laughs> They're walking up to the table blind. I'm betting fucking blind. What is going on, people? We're back. It is another glorious Sunday. It is the first glorious Sunday in the world of football, and all four of the fellas are here to break it down. We got Taco, we got the Wander, we got Snoop Luke, and we got Mick Dilly. We saw the college that took place yesterday. It was great. We had some winners, we had some losers. But the great thing about betting is you can take whatever happened yesterday and throw it right out the window. Short circuit that memory because it's a new day. You bounce back tomorrow, whether you had a good day or a bad day. First things first, I want to say this because this is a sports betting podcast, and I did a little research, and this is just everyone keep this in mind. Last year in the NFL was the best betting for for fans ever <laughs> that Vegas has had in the last 21 years. Why do I say that? Because rent is due this year, and Vegas is going to want their money back. So be careful. <laughs> Vegas can lick my big toe. We ready to ball. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Coming year two of the People's Takeover. That's what we're calling it. This, this has a fucking is our time. time. Now go out there and take it. And this podcast can single-handedly do it. So choose to not be. I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of hearing how great Vegas is. This time. Okay. They're you're, 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 you're emitting so much power, your computer is not keeping up. <laughs> you're getting so angry you know, yeah. you're short circuiting it you're surging too much well vegas is watching that's what's happening well we can't do anything about grocery prices gas prices we can do something about goddamn gambling let's get this right. that's what we're here to do god damn it so let's kick it off we got 14 beautiful nfl games two of them already took place and we'll cover those on wednesday let's start it off here we got the tennessee titans and the chicago bears one o'clock p.m we got a rookie quarterback going up against pretty much another rookie quarterback making his first full season. Will Levis, Caleb Williams. The spread is Bears minus three and a half at home and the over under 44 and a half points. Never in order and it's never the right spread. I hate when you do this. <laughs> All right. Tennessee plus four on DraftKings at the Chicago Bears. I hate DraftKings. King, so for once in your fucking life, use the same sports book as the fucking podcast. D-K. You always make the, you always make the numbers. Let's make our pick. DK. We do all use DK as legal better, so we need you, the illegal better, <laughs> to join the right. It's the not numbers legal. are always so much better on FanDuel. I just well, don't. no, Dylan, this you can be this guy. You you can be our let you know shop guy, and when they're like. Tennessee plus four Chicago and DraftKings, and you're like, if you like Chicago more, they have it at minus three and a half on FanDuel, and then stop. You can be that now guy. I'm, now I'm in a pickle because I already made 14 picks in my notes that I got to erase. <laughs> <laughs> I have no difference. difference. <laughs> <laughs> when, when they're all half game differences, it's, it'll make such a difference in the record. <laughs> Dylan's in the corner, like, I would like everyone to know. My picks are strictly FanDuel, and if you would like to make and grab these, you must head to FanDuel. <laughs> the rest of the boys will give you DraftKings. Proceed. <laughs> Anyone have a pick on this game? or Tennessee plus four, and I would say money line. I... DeAndre Hopkins is playing, but I really like Chicago's defense. But I do think Tennessee, with them deciding we're not going to heavy focus on the run, we're going to trust our arm in Will Levis. We gave him weapons. 
And I don't know what to expect from Chicago. I don't know how they're going to distribute. I don't know if Swift is really going to do much. He did good at the Eagles, but the Eagles is a one of four O line that Chicago does not have. So I'm taking Tennessee with the points. Yeah, rookie quarterbacks are seven and twenty-two. Um, the last twenty-nine games uh, against the spread, they've only covered six of those games. Everything is pointing Tennessee. They've done the biggest 180 on a defense I've seen in years. They literally have nine new defensive acquisitions. Five of them are pro bowlers. Uh, I like Tennessee plus four. Did you read all that off your phone? Did you write all that down? I have a lot of notes, Tyler, yes. Wrote <laughs> all of that down. That's crazy. I cannot wait till you're actually I have a natural thought, my guy. Anyways. Um, Sorry for doing research on the games. You can just, you know, maybe memorize a sentence or a word or something. Um, I'm taking Tennessee as well. Well, I, I have a thing where me and Luke are just fading all these rookie quarterbacks on their spreads today. And, well, a rookie quarterback lies in this game. So here lies the spread of Tennessee plus four. And that's where I'm at. Is Luke frozen or is he just smiling? He's frozen. Oh, he's frozen again. Okay, I couldn't yeah. tell what yeah. was happening. That's why that I can't think. be. Up. Oh. My back. Hello. Yes, you're good. You're good. Hey, hello from the other side. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, originally, got? I had Chicago Bears money line, and then we created our little fade the rookie QBs in their first game spreads. So here we go. <laughs> but that being. Said, this could still work out because I have the Bears money line. The Bears can still win and not cover the spread. You could sneak that out. <laughs> Three points. I got the Bears money line. Victory. All righty. All right. Next game, we got the – you know what, Tyler? Because I don't want to fuck your order up, put the game on, and then I'll talk about it. God bless America. There we go. Arizona Cardinals and Buffalo Bills. We got the Bills at a six. See, I got the same one here. Six and a half points. Some will be the same. Some will be yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like we, that every single week, and that's why we always tell you to just switch books, and you're like, eh, me, 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 and then you don't switch books. Anyways, <laughs> just switch books. Sometimes it's better numbers, and I'm stubborn. I apologize. Anyways, Arizona, Buffalo. I do have a play on this game. Uh, I like Arizona plus six and a half. I'm off the Buffalo train. I'm way off yep. the Buffalo train. Not only am oh, I off that Super Bowl train, I'm off the fucking playoff train as well. Uh, fuck these guys. And it all starts going back to Arizona. Uh, I look at Buffalo. I look at the weapons that they have. I look at the weapons that Arizona has. They're really, they're really similar. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'll go next. Who the fuck's joining me on the Cardinals money line? Because I think that the Cardinals offense is going to light it up. <laughs> And Buffalo is not going to be really sure what to do. They're going to spread the ball around so much because they don't have Stephon Gilmore – or Stephon Gilmore, uh, Stephon Diggs <laughs> that they're not really sure who's going to get the ball. So it's going to take a little while to figure that out. Arizona is going to win this game outright. Boom. All right, we got two people on Arizona. Luke, I feel like you should go next because, you know, you are Arizona. See, I did the – I just made the safe pick of plus six and a half. Okay. Smart. I believe there are only three ways to bet this game, and I am choosing the money line because I do not believe in Buffalo when it comes to their defense. I think their defense is very weak, very soft. We don't have a healthy Milano. He controls the entire middle. And Arizona is known to give offensive games all the time. Their defense, <clears throat> pitiful. Arizona has no idea what to do with their defense. But that offense and click. You know how Kyler is when he has a receiver that's capable of doing high balls, which is all around good, great receivers. I'm yep. assuming that out of Harrison because it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Yep. Yeah, hey, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to give my picks and not really explain much because apparently my fucking the internet right here cannot handle it. We we literally hey. got your pick and then the second you froze, Tyler had just moved it. So it, you were able to get your pick off. <laughs> okay. I might not have a I, I might not be able to explain a lot of shit today. So if something is, seems wild, just accept it. Okay. 
I said, I can't explain myself today, so you're just going to have to ask Fair enough. questions. <laughs> All right, Tyco, what do we got next year? All right, next up, we got Carolina heading to New Orleans on a plus three and a half spread. Yeah, well, uh, hold up. Dylan's got to do something. Dylan's got to get his notes. Go, someone go ahead. Oh, how about Saints got with the Saints jersey on? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So, I rep Kamara. But I do not rep the Saints. I'm taking Carolina plus three and a half because this team, I just, I don't like either. I'm going to be honest. I don't like either. They both are in hideous situations. At least Bryce Young should only go up. Derek Carr is Derek Carr. I respected you in Vegas, but you have not made me respect you in New Orleans. So until Spencer Rattler is the quarterback, because why not? I will not ride New Orleans. Carolina plus three and a half. I actually really like that pick, Jesse, because the only thing I wanted to tell you before you made it was that Dennis Allen, the head coach of the Saints, is currently the worst head coach in the Football League when it comes to covering the spread. He is 22 and 48 when it comes to covering the spread in the NFL. So when I look at that and I look at this Carolina team this year, who last year they had fucking nine people at the game. It can't get much worse than that. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to take Carolina plus three and a half. Um. I'm just – am I heard? We're good? Yes, yeah, so okay. you're all good right now. I got I got the Panthers' money line. I'm just going to say this for the rest of my picks. I do have a lot of underdogs this week. Okay, fuck Vegas. <laughs> I like it. Well, we got three people on Carolina, Ty. Do you want to ride an Yeah, um, I did not make a pick on this game. Um, but for the sake of the podcast – I will – I mean, I don't know. I still don't like what I saw in the Carolina's offense last year, but – Give me the three and a half. I think this is going to be ugly. Actually, just give me the under. I just feel like Bryce is going to do better this year. You uh, I'll get that for you real quick. It's uh, 41 and a half. Give me under 41 and a half. That's fair. Smart play. I mean, it's it's the, it's the AFC beast, as they call them. This so. might be 14 and 17. Yeah. I hate this division. <laughs> Under. <laughs> I hate this whole division. All right, next game we have. Let's get an over, possibly. We got Houston heading to Indianapolis. Two young quarterbacks, two young studs. Richardson injured early last year, looking to make it a big breakout second season, even though he didn't have a full rookie season. Houston getting three point or giving three points to Indianapolis at home. Where are we at? Colts money line. I think the I Colts like are it. just a dangerous team with Anth- Anthony Richards healthy. I'll go next. I'm taking over 49 points in this matchup. I think it's just going to be an electric one o'clock matchup. So both of these quarterbacks got something to prove. CJ Stroud already put himself on the map last year. I think this year is the we have more weapons. We have Stephon Diggs. Look at my arm. Watch me work year. So I think I think over 49 is safe, but I'm I'm just rooting for points in this one. This division makes me sick. They have the most interesting in division games. Like I'm gonna say this right now. I think this spread is a push. I I literally think this is a three point. It should be three and a half so that the books can give themselves space for minus three and a half. When it comes to these vision games, I got to give it to the home. So I'm going to take Indy plus three. I just, Houston could win this game, but I don't think it'll be by one. Divisional home dogs are 23 and seven the last 30 games. So to just tag on to everything you guys have been saying, give me the Colts money line. Jacksonville and Miami. I just want to say before before we talk about this game, Miami's pyro move that they made this year I think is so funny where they said basically until October, every away team that comes in to play us, you are now on the sidelines but they did some weird renovation at uh, uh, what do you call it? Hard Rock Stadium? Is that what? 
Nathan. Yep. Yeah, if it's still what that was called, where the roof that would block the sun on like the uh, opponent's uh, sidelines is now gone to where if you're just on one side of the field, it's shade. Oh, yeah. And the other side of the field, it's just light. So, they're so let's all- also talk about the feels like temperature today is 99 in um, Florida. And if you're on Miami's sideline, they can get it down to like 80, 80 degrees uh-huh. on the sideline. And then on the other side, it it's, gets like up to like one, 110, I think. Yeah. And if you're just cooking in the sun on that sideline, it's like 110 degrees on the sideline. So a lot of Miami, points. clear advantage to start already. <laughs> And Tyreek, as we just learned recently, is in a little bit of a kerfuffle because he got arrested on his way to the game um, for, I believe, probably speeding. No, it um, was because of a driving violation. Well, it was speeding because that's a driving doesn't. violation. That is the driving um, violation. <laughs> most, likely, most likely speeding. Uh, <laughs> it's being reported that he's still going to play in the game today. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, the whole system has been failing us long before today. <laughs> God damn it. That's annoying. Driving violation? <laughs> You're right, yes. I know, you are correct. We're probably speeding because he's fast. I get it. Think for a quick second, <laughs> just to regain ourselves. Sports betters, you need to download Sharps, the better social network. With Sharps mobile app, you can kill your friends' bets with one click. See a bet you like? Just click the whale tail icon and boom, it will open in your corresponding sports book. Sharp securely connects to major sports books like FanDuel, MGM, Caesars, and more. So you can not only track your bets, but share your bets in creative ways. So gather the gens, download Sharps for free, and join our fast growing sports betting community. Okay, so Miami. I'll start. Miami minus three and a half is where I lie on this game because of two reasons. One, I think Jacksonville might be the least talked about team all offseason. Not a fucking, maybe Dallas had less noise, but the only reason why Dallas is still talked about is because of C.D. Lamb. Not a people's made out of Jacksonville. They signed Taron Armstrong. That was it. Uh, so when I just look at them, they haven't gotten better. They're still going to be pretty mid. Uh, Trevor Lawrence needs a prove it year just to prove that you know he got the contract but to prove that he deserves that contract but i still just think this team's gonna be mid so miami minus three and a half well give me the jacksonville money no, no, i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding fuck no miami money line easy you don't want it that three and a half you know what fuck it I'll do I don't have it in my parlay I made, but I'll do the three and a half. Okay, okay. Grab it and spread it all over his toast. Yeah, because this minus three and a half is pretty easy <laughs> shtick for me. I just don't. Unless Jacksonville's rookie receiver is like a godsend for them, I don't know where they're really going to. I don't know. This could end up being an over game, honestly, if Jacksonville's. If I don't know what Jacksonville's supposed to be. Are they supposed to be good? Jacksonville is supposed to be exactly what they're exactly what you saw last year. So what did you think they were last year? I mean, I can't go off of that. Trevor Lawrence played like shit. Is he gonna stay that way? I just don't know. Well, think of that team, but no. then take Kelvin Ridley away and replace him with Gabe Davis. No, That's he it. got replaced. No, no, no. He got replaced by Brian Thomas Jr. They don't take a receiver in the first round who is overshadowed by Malik Neighbors from that was still I'm, Okay, yeah, I still don't. I don't feel like he – I don't know what they're doing. They think Brian Thomas Jr. is going to be what Zay Jones was, and I have a strong feeling that he's going to be a lot better than what Zay Jones was. I just want to throw that out there. This could be an over. ET and Ingram, over. I'm banging over. I want points. Boom. 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 In my Tiger. parlay, I took the under. Oh, shit. I took the under 49 and a half. Well, I mean, if you think about it, Miami should win this game because what? They just paid Jalen Waddle, Tyler Reek Hill, uh, Tua, Jalen Ramsey. Everybody just got fucking paid. <laughs> Expectations should be high, you know what I mean? So some players fall off after the bag. <laughs> they all just have- oh, never know. Uh, all right. Next game we got. Robbery. Minnesota Vikings. 
Jesus. and not J.J. McCarthy, but Sam Shit Darnold show. going to take on Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. I have an immediate play, and I think we're all going to be on a similar spot. It is under, 41 and a half. Under 41 and a half. Yep, that's exactly where I lie here because you're looking at uh, Daniel Jones, who 17 to 20 points, that's his cap. And no offense to the Minnesota Vikings, but this defense has gotten significantly worse. The only thing that's going to help them is the Giants' offense still significantly bad. <laughs> yep. Give me the under. Singletary is the replacement that Barkley uh, for Barkley. I just don't. I don't think it's going to be that same level of production. We all saw what Saquon just did with the Eagles. So, yeah, I just don't. I just don't think they're the, they're the same. So, give me the under. That's the only safe play in this game, if you even make any play on this game, if you yeah. have that much degeneracy. This safe play Personally, I didn't touch it. has to be the under, but also Minnesota money line. Because hear me out. Sam Darnold is electric in the first game, or first couple games, every time he gets a chance. This is actually true. He fades after. He's a power yeah, And he though. throws like two or three picks in the first half, and he's done. <laughs> yeah, but like, I but he like, does have those moments. I, I do agree with that. Aaron Jones' tank isn't empty. I think he can still, if you only like give him like 15 and you keep him on like a lower count, he can still maybe break on one of those. You still got Jettas. You know, like I said, Sam Darnold, he uses his weapons well. He's had a whole offseason to learn the playbook. Giants are just bad. I see the Giants as a contender. For a three and fourteen or zero and seventeen team, they might be the first team to get no win, and I truly feel they'll like be somewhere in between zero and four wins. I feel like. <laughs> okay, Jesse. <laughs> he started. He started his rookie season bad, but then his second year, he started three and one. Then he got injured through the first couple games. Then in Carolina in twenty twenty one, that was when he was leading in passing yards the first five games and made them four and one. And then the next That's where year, we all said, what the fuck, Sam Darnold? <laughs> uh, and then the next year, Sam Darnold played in only six games and went 4-2 and two to start the season for Carolina. And then uh, we go to uh, this year. So, to add to your point, yeah. Minnesota money line. That's where I've seen it. Yeah. I'm... Don't you yeah. with the team, man. Where are you? Yeah, I'm on Minnesota's money line, too. I wanted to not even touch this game at all because... Smart man. I mean, we already know what the Giants are, dog shit, but with Sam Darnold on the Vikings right now with JJ out, we have we honestly have no clue what the hell they're gonna decide to do. Yeah, it turned out Kellen have, Mond wasn't that guy, huh, Jesse? Who? Kellen Mond, the guy you were trying to tell me that I was being too hard on because he was actually a pretty good Mond. backup. Yeah, What's he's gone now. Mond? Kellen Mond, yeah. I don't remember this one. I, I remember it vividly. I remember, I remember you vividly getting mad at me for shitting on him on this podcast, and then he got oh, cool. no, I, I do. I do. Uh, I need film. I no, need he's film. not the quarterback, and Sam Donald. Yeah, you're going to have to look that one up. You're going to have to look that one up. Um, the receipt. Um, and if it's anyone else. It sounds, sounds like, sounds like, like you might remember this. If anyone uh, remembers, play the fifth, because me, I don't remember. I remember you, you. <laughs> I remember pretty clear. Jesse, you're better off just pleading the fifth at this point. Listen, girl doesn't even know what a driving violation is. Stop it right now. Sounds like you definitely remember. <laughs> hey, man, I made a mistake. <laughs> what? You think he remembers the conversation from a year ago? Stop this, guy. I made a mistake. Perjury. Don't use that again. Oh, that is God, impressive. That is a great point. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, Next up. Please. Oh, this is just a fucking shit show. We got Jamar Chase and the Cincinnati Bengals and the New England Patriots. Jamar Chase, as of 30 seconds ago from Adam Schefter, it is unclear if he will play because there is still not a deal that has been reached. So we do not yeah. know if Jamar Chase is playing. Oh, no. as of we'll now. find out. We'll find out in like 12 to 13 minutes. Yeah. Um, he's in an illness. He's sick. He doesn't know. Yeah, sick of that team of what they're paying him. Uh, fuck <laughs> New England? Worst team in the NFL this year. That needs to be said off the bat. If you look at their defense far. and you look at their By offense, far. they are the worst team in the NFL. Is anyone playing this game? Because I don't know if I am yet. I, oh, yeah. I am. We got Cincinnati minus eight. We got a fucking rookie quarterback in New England. 
Put him in the way. Wait. I thought, no, 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 no. Jacoby Brissett's playing, isn't he? Yeah, Jacoby Brissett is the starting quarterback. Put him in the way anyways. I do like Cincy. Too late now. We're riding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ride it or die, baby. Cincinnati. <laughs> Minus eight is disgusting. I'm not touching the spread. I'm gonna. I, I'm going over under. I'll just. I can't it skip week one, so I'll run minus eight. I'm not gonna pack the Patriots in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the under forty and a half. Um, not that I think that the Bengals are gonna have a bad week. I just think it's gonna be a boring game. I think it's gonna be the game on lowest Red of the zone. lowest of the day, right? Yeah. No, second lowest. There's a, like a thirty-six spread. <laughs> This will be like South Carolina, um, Kentucky from yesterday, and it will be 31 to 6. Yeah, there's a 30. Sorry, Ty, there's a 39 spread on here. That's lower. Okay, here, here's the thing. The actual the list that's going to be coming out for the actives and inactives who's playing in the game comes out, should be coming out at 1130. We can circle back to this game and see if Jamar Chase is playing and then possibly alter our picks. Because that does affect a lot. I'm keeping the under either way. I'm confident on that. Well, yeah, if Chase doesn't play, you're definitely seeing an under. I don't think yeah. Chase Yeah, because yeah, T. Higgins ain't playing either. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So either way, I yeah. So Chase playing really makes a big outcome. Um, if you want to wait, Luke, you can wait. But I don't think – All right, let's go to the next one, though. Let's go to the next yeah. one. We got another yeah. big game coming up next. Pittsburgh heading to Atlanta. Russell wow. Wilson, as of this morning, still saying, I want to play. Too bad, I want to play. I'm fine. Let me play. So they're not even sure. I'm not positive right now as they to who's a starting. starting. As of last night at 11.50 p.m., Justin Fields is a starting quarterback. For yeah, me. on fantasy right now, he uh, Fields has the uh, projected points. So yeah. Justin Fields starting against Atlanta. Kirk Cousins coming off the ACL first start in ATL with what's probably Kirk's most loaded offense with weapons. And it's in Atlanta. I feel like Atlanta is going to be juiced just like Ford field will be tonight in that dome. So I'm taking Atlanta minus the four points. 85% of the money is coming in on the over. Thank you. God, give me the under. I am taking. I feel like Fields is, might fumble his little bag here too. I'm not sure. <laughs> what do you? Have He's gonna run it a lot. Do you have it at forty two and a half or? Uh, let me check. I just want to make sure that it's uh, the same. Yeah. Okay. Luke, Jesse, how you guys feeling? Steelers money line. This is who <laughs> Atlanta may be looked at. For I love it. Team. I love it. But I, I really like Atlanta's defense. They added Judon. Secondary has always been decent. Pittsburgh defense, defense. Give me Pittsburgh plus four. Now let's circle back to the. Did I hear Pittsburgh Moneyline? Any further comments? <laughs> Wait, what? Any further comments on that Pittsburgh Moneyline play? No, they usually – I mean, they're, they've always – Mike Tomlin's always like the, the 500-type team. They win games. Sometimes they shouldn't, and they lose games that they shouldn't. And I feel like you just kind of <laughs> never know. They rely kind on the a lot. Kind of just spot. <laughs> and, Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love it. And I think Justin Fields still can do something. And I just think he was set up for failure in Chicago. And I'm hoping that they don't do that to him in Pittsburgh. I think. I, Probably yeah. might be these receivers, but other than that. Yeah. <laughs> not I mean, he can still move too. and he's pretty mobile. So it's like. 220 rushing but yeah, that's that's generally it. It's just because of the Steelers, what they just do every year. <laughs> All right, let's get into the next one. Four o'clock slate, baby. Let's move it on down. 
Seattle Seahawks, Denver Broncos plus six and a half. Well, just got a breaking news on my shit. Breaking news, the Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott have agreed to a four-year, $200 million extension. This monster deal makes Dak Prescott the highest-paid quarterback in NFL history, making $61 million per year. Okay, sorry, we're going to jump games real quick. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking Cleveland minus two and a half. <laughs> in his bag so he can fumble it on week one. Let's go, Cleveland. Minus two and a half. Jesse. I hate this game, but it's in Cleveland, so... The Cleveland defense. on paper has the better team as well, I think, this year. Yeah, because... Top three defense in the there's league. No there's no If there's ever a time, you need to figure it out. It's now. There's no bland in Dallas anymore, and he was kind of the guy helping without Trayvon, and we know Trayvon gets burnt. So I got to take Cleveland minus two and a half. Dallas just doesn't seem like the black. I can't touch him for four weeks at least. All I know is the Deshaun Watson little thing in Cleveland has just been basically a shit show from the I, tr I can trust Cleveland's defense. I can't trust him. Yep. And that's why and I because of that, I'm taking Dallas money line. I can trust I I'd rather trust Dak in preseason or not preseason, regular season, because we're not at playoffs yet. So give me the Cowboys money line. And they still got a uh, good defense too. The, key, yeah, right. the, Cowboys, the, Cowboys, the Cowboys haven't done shit in the offseason, man. I mean, they, they paid – I don't know. According to Jerry Cowboys. Jones at the at, in fucking in the offseason, he was going all in. He didn't do anything. He I know. He at the last minute. That's all he did. <laughs> he he brought back Zeke yeah. Elliott, baby. And five hours before week one, he paid his quarterback. Oh, we got <laughs> the 29-year-old Dalvin Cook. Way to go, Jerry. Way to go. Hours before uh, week one. What the fuck? Way to go. Uh, I'm taking the under here because of what Luke said. I, I think Cleveland's defense is a top three defense in the league, and I can't trust that offense to get points, and I think this game leads under. So I have the under. No Jerome Ford stomping all over the place and making it a high. I hope, it, I hope it's a, run, a I, running game. That leads my under more. I if I could have one thing in the NFL, it'd just be for Deshaun to return to his Houston team. It'd be a beautiful thing to see. But it's never going to happen. We got to throw it out. It's just, I, damn it, I feel like Dallas now. Fuck him. Deshaun, do something. Prove you're worth a bag. Yeah, for, for real. I, I agree. All right, back to the game that we were originally going to. Seattle and Denver. Geno Smith, the man got the bag. People are happy that he got paid. And now he's back in Seattle in the saddle. Oh, I like how that went. Going up against... Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. I don't know how I feel. Well, yet. let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Me and Luke are fading the Denver Broncos and their rookie quarterback and taking Seattle minus a six and a half. Fade the rookie parlay, baby. I'm going to take Denver plus six and a half on this one because of what Denver or what Seattle has done in this offseason. And they just, I feel like, have gotten worse. Uh, and Denver's gotten better. Well, do you know who Denver lost on defense? I'm talking about offense. No, Sorry. no, 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 let's no, talk no. About defense. Okay, let's talk about defense. Let's talk about defense. They lost do you know Justin who they Simmons. lost on defense? They lost Justin Simmons. And... Yeah, no, that's all that matters. You can stop there. Oh, no, that's not yeah. all that matters. Those are the players that matter besides Justin Simmons. So you're wrong. No, no. No one on that defense matters. That was the best player on their entire defense. and they didn't. Yes, it was the best player on their entire defense. They didn't but if the, Lions traded, if the Lions traded Aiden Hutchinson, would you say, oh, they got our defense now? No, their best <laughs> player got traded. That's what happened. Their defense wasn't as good as it was supposed to be. Any yeah. of the last couple of years, they last slowly year was the worst year their defense was, and every because other year they're slowly the getting rid of more and more people, and then they get rid of the biggest centerpiece in their team. It's not a D lineman, it's not a linebacker. It was Justin Simmons. Him being up top protected them from wide receiver play on an entire side of the field. He made them have close games. Justin Simmons flew all over the field. Like a okay, but you're just acting like they don't have a secondary. They don't. They have Sertan. Pat Sertan is a lockdown corner. What do you mean? That's it. That's it. But you just said they don't have a secondary. 
So now you're just one player doesn't make a whole secondary. If it's but apparently Justin Simmons did make the whole secondary, so you just contradicted yourself. Did I finish the sentence? No. So you're gonna backpedal now. I'm not backpedaling. Are you gonna tell me that Troy Polamalu was as important as a safety? I mean, as his corners? No, your safety is more important than your corners. Yes, but you're telling me. I'm, I'm telling you now that they still have a good secondary. Okay, I guess I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think Sertain cannot do it on his own. Sauce doesn't do it on his own. He can so shut Pat, down a guy. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait, wait. He can't shut so down. Pat Sertan was injured for seven games last year. How come fucking Justin didn't do it on his own? And they were still shitty last year. That's what I'm trying to say is they got rid of such a big player to their defense and expect Sertain to be able to – like he's only one man. Correct. In the corner – you can only do so much if you're not like Jair, who gets to play side play. Sertain has to follow. He will always follow. So he can shut one guy down, but Simmons was his overall guy who was helping in all the places he couldn't cover damn near. Okay. And so then I on, feel like they cannot guard the throw anymore. Can I add on top of the Denver defense play that I also think Geno Smith is going to have a uh, degress here? I do too, and I think Sam Howell is going to be in the – Uh-huh. In so the, I, that, also, that also factors as well. But I just I don't trust Denver's defense at all. I don't trust their offense at all. I gotta take Seattle minus seven. You know what? I like that. Put me on an island. Someone's gotta be on an island at some one of these games. All right. Next game, Vegas and Los Angeles. This is the lowest over under of the week. Yeah, no one wants to touch this one. Uh, but here's the thing about this game. You got two quarterbacks that on paper, not alike at all. Aiden O'Connell and Justin Herbert. Yeah, a lot more people are talking about Aiden O'Connell than Justin Herbert in this game. Not in terms of, like, he's going to do better. I just mean more talked about. You know what I mean? Uh, the real question here is, is this, and I guess Tyler or Luke will probably be the perfect person to answer this, is this really a new Los Angeles Chargers team with Jim Harbaugh? There's only one way to find out, and that's tuning in at 430, <laughs> baby. Oh, man, I'm taking the Los Angeles Chargers minus three. Uh, I, I have every reason to believe that they will be different. Um, Jim Harbaugh's a different motherfucker, so there's no way they're not different, right? Uh, I really I would think. There's also nothing better than a pissed-off Devontae Adams when the Lions need a wide receiver late in the season, so – I need to start early. He needs to get pissed off right off the rip. So give me the Los Angeles Chargers minus three points. Oh, actually, I take that back. Aiden O'Connell is not playing. They are starting Gardner Minshew. I was going to say that. Yep. But I don't know. Minshew Magic. Minshew Magic's getting a little old. It's hard about that boy Gardner. Yeah, I still stand by everything I said, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the Chargers can handle a team like Vegas. I don't think Max. I don't know, Max Crosby, he he can't keep being one of the only good people on this defense. It's really getting sad. Yeah, but he's got a partner now. He does have a partner in Crosby. Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby on that defense. I got Ve- I got Vegas plus three. But I'm gonna be honest. This is an upset spot for a charge. It is an upset Vegas spot. Money line. Yep, it is an upset spot. I don't like this it. is this this is why I'm taking Chargers money line instead of the spread. I think it's probably gonna be a close game. Yeah. But at the same time, Jim's gonna be Jim. Bengals wide receiver Jim Jamar Chase is active. So, <laughs> there you go. All right, you got Sorry, I need to let that out. I was, I was stressing. <laughs> He's on my fantasy team. I didn't think I was going to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to start off week one without one of my top three fucking guys I drafted. All right, Luke, back, uh, back in the headspace. <sighs> yeah, do you have a pick on that Cincinnati game now? Now that you know he's playing? Oh, that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, the... That in there. They're spread, that minus eight spread. Bang. All right. Next game. Next game. There's only one more left in the four o'clock window. Washington Commanders and Jaden Daniels going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield. 
Spread. Well, look, let me just start Ooh. by saying Baker's, first of all, Baker's a dog, okay? Yeah. Second of all, rookie quarterback in Washington. Complete the parlay, baby. That's it. That's it. Ah. Washington's not covering four. Baker's covering four. About to bake me a parlay. Baker Mayfield, let's go. Ah, I agree 1,000 fucking percent. I think Tam, dude. I, I, I really. Fuck you, you, you know how, uh, <laughs> you know how QBs. It's like, oh, they're they start at a team and then just things just, just for some reason just can't work out. Right. They go to another team and it's like they just been resurrected. Yes, Jared Goff. <laughs> Jared Goff. I think what the Lions were for Jared Goff is what Tampa Bay is for Baker. I can relate to that. I think ba- I think Baker finally found a home where he's gonna a lot of good things. You know, I may have belief that Jaden Daniels can win Rookie of the Year, but I don't think that starts today. And I do think Baker and the gang take care of business. But I believe we're sitting on a 41 and a half under over. Somebody check that. I have 42, but I could be wrong. Can't find my phone right now. Don't know where I'm going. Have a second. Uh, hey, Jesse, I wouldn't blame you if you took the under, man, because, uh, you know, Mikey Sanders still up. is on the field in this game. 41 or 42, Ty? 42 straight up. Okay. okay. I'm going to take the – ooh, I don't like that. Ride with me. I'm going under. 21-24, over. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I hate 21-21 is a perfect go into OT score. I hate 42. That's so disgusting. So disgusting. I'm good. I'm going over. Fuck it. Guess the game starts now. Sorry what I said the first time. Do your thing, Jaden. Do your fucking thing. I guess the game is yeah, I think, I think that's the target is. I mean, but, Jesse, I agree with you. I think Jaden's going to do good. It's just like. Okay. that was it, is, These are like first games and shit. So. That was the question I wanted, to, I wanted to ask to you, Tyler, and Luke. You guys are fading all four rookie quarterbacks, but I'm curious. Out of these four that you're fading, is there one that you think is going to like do the best? Is there one that you think is going to like actually like perform really well? I think it's going to be between Caleb and uh, Jaden. Okay. Yeah, those would be the two that I would say would have the best days, but I'm going to give the upper hand probably to Caleb just because his weapons are better. So if he can have a better day performance-wise, he has the better weapons. So I give Caleb the best shot, but yeah. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I agree. I would agree with Ty on that. Yeah, just come with the under. Yeah, the under. Because it's fucking Eckler. What's Eckler going to goddamn do? Brian Robinson. We don't know how well he's going to do behind that shit storm of an old man. Line. Terry McLaurin and a rookie tight end is his fucking two. Are you trying to get us to the under? Is that what's happening? No, 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 no. He's explaining, he's explaining, he's explaining why Bay. he was back and forth, and he's just explaining to himself why he's convinced. I'm, explaining, okay. yeah. I'm right. explaining why Tampa Bay should win and cover this game, and how Washington can't compete in my eyes because I just read like they who did, they got rid of Dotson. Well, Jaden Daniels, if he's running, it's because he's running for his life, so it's not going to be possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. This Tampa Bay defense has always been tough. You know, the rookie quarterbacks get the blitz sent their way. Sam Howell got sacked like 51 fucking times. They didn't do anything. Yeah, let's not forget about that. They didn't this is all true. Anything. And you know and what? Like, oh, Sam Howell's disrespect was crazy because he was still a dog on that offense. And didn't yeah, sack 50 51 fucking times. Like, and they disrespected the fuck out of him and got rid of him instead of getting him some help. He was number four in passing yards last year, and now he's a backup quarterback. What the fuck? He's still mad about that. What the fuck? <laughs> so it's got it. All right. It's be an under. <laughs> On the night you football. Ready? You guys ready for the night? We're all Michigan people here. If you guys didn't know, now you know. Oh, Tonight news. is a wild card rematch. What? Kendrick Lamar will be the headliner for the 2025 Super Bowl halftime show in New Orleans. Wow. Hi. Kendrick? So, they're not like us. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He cooks no. in front of everybody. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, all right. We'll revisit. We'll revisit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Lions coming back to Detroit after Detroit ended their season last year. Matthew Stafford returns with what I think is an upgraded Rams team. The Lions also upgraded and revamped the entire defense in the secondary, returning nine of 11 starters on offense. Tonight's game is Sunday Night Football. Ford Field is going to be absolutely electric. It will probably be louder than the playoff game. What do you guys have in this one? I feel like there's two ways this game could go. I just want to say that. I'm looking at this game as either a shootout or a blowout of us winning. Either way. I think it's going okay. to be a blowout game where it's like really – like not not a blowout. Sorry, blowout's the wrong word. I think it's going to be a super close game, like the playoff game. Like I can't take four and a half points, okay? Like that's that just seems crazy to me. Or – the Lions are going to beat the shit out of them. And I cannot make my mind up. So I, that's where I'm at right now. That yeah. That is for the sole reason why I took the Lions money line in this game. Okay, that's smart. I know it's minus 205, but, like, I think this game, I think I, I don't know, I think these odds should be closer than they are. Yeah. So I, I think this is just going to be another close game like the playoff game. Because it's like, dude, yeah. they, they they had all off season to prepare for this, and to think you have to be delusional to think that they're not gonna, they're not gunning for us after knocking them out. Of oh playoffs. yeah, you have to be like, crazy to think they don't have this bitch circled. Like you take out you take out the, the, most important the entire Stafford and Golf shit from this, and you just look at it as two teams. They're they're gunning for our heads. I think this is going to be an insanely close game. 90 dog fight, and for that reason, I'm taking the Rams plus four and a half. I, 90, I want fair. nothing more than a Lions victory every single game this season, but I'm scared to death of these rookie second, this rookie secondary, these new guys taking on Puka and uh, Cooper. I'm, I'm, I am afraid of that. Plus, Matthew Stafford can fucking cook, those are facts. The other thing, though, is we revamped the entire secondary. DJ Reader, I believe, is playing. And Cortland Sutton is gone. Uh, <laughs> but, like, there's everything – everything says this game will be, like, there will be a minute and a half left, and I will be shitting my fucking pants in Ford Field tonight. So, yeah. for that reason, I got to take the four and a half. See, I got a weird feeling that it's going to be the opposite of how the last game ended to where we're going to actually have to stop them on the final drive to end the game, not well, have to get a yeah. first down. It's going to be like a fucking And we will see yeah. what that fucking defense really and, is about this year. And They're we've far, seen okay. Stafford in the two-minute drills. Scary. You want to go to a Super Bowl off of a two-minute drill? Yeah. Tampa Bay, Cooper Cup, down the seam, in the middle. Close enough to get the field goal. Spike it down. And Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, I don't think, was 100% healthy in that playoff game. Cooper Cup is now. You know for sure he is healthy. now. Puka Nakua is in his second year. This is a scary game. This is mm -hmm. honestly. Honestly, if I'm a Rams fan, I think we can win it if I'm Rams fan. Yes. Yeah. I, I if you're a Lions fan, you don't even realize it, but in the blind spot of every Lions fan's brain, this is a fucking letdown spot. A huge letdown spot. Like, the letdown spot of the fucking week. Of all the games. Yeah. Who has the most to let down this week? Detroit letting down yeah. the Lions fans with an 0-1 start and causing the biggest overreaction in Detroit mm -hmm. since, I don't even know when, since we traded Matthew Stafford. Yo, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with that because if they – Oh, sorry, Dylan. Don't make me be that guy. That's why I'm taking the Rams plus one and a half. It's just – it's a letdown spot in every – like, I'm excited as fuck. But in the back of my head, I'm like, it's a letdown spot. It like, totally as is. A, like, Dylan, as a fan, I want nothing more than the Lions to fucking kick their ass, straight up win, easy dub. But as, like, a betting person, this game scares the living shit out yeah, of me. Yeah, as a betting person, I got to take everything out of this, and I got to just look at this as what my heart would do. And my heart would do – 91% of the bets are on the over, so I'm taking the under. But I'm going to give you a two-for-one. I'm going to take the under and the Rams money line. That's my play. I have to take bias out of it. I ain't going to fight it. I ain't going to fight it. I have to take bias out of it. I'm not going to fight it. I, I can't blame you. <laughs> we can you. lose this game and then win the next five. I'm not going to be mm -hmm. mad about it. <laughs> and, like, Ty, Ty, to go into what you kind of said about how 
the Lions are set up to do something tragic to start 0-1 and, and to cause like an insane big overreaction from people because there's so much hype. But to me, if we lose, if the Lions lose this game, that's not like a big deal. I don't think that's like insanely bad because this is going to be. I think it would be a good thing. Game. It's like a kick in the fucking mouth, saying, "Hey, yeah, this year ain't going to be easy at all." <laughs> yeah, like bring you kind of back, get the get that reality shot in you early on instead of having yeah. it come at a very critical point in the season. Like, <laughs> wouldn't be terribly um, mad, two, but I'm hoping. What was that two years ago when the Panthers absolutely fucking rolled us when we just needed to beat them and we would have been in playoffs? <laughs> yes. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Monday night football. Let's try this again, Aaron Rodgers. I start the goddamn conversation of LA being able to beat this team and you don't even let me give a pick. You didn't pick? I thought you picked Rance plus four and a half. Oh, sorry, Jesse. I forgot to say any of that because the conversation switched. Sorry. Sorry. Plus four and a half because the secondary is untested. And if anyone's going to test them, it's Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford with those weapons. I don't think the run game is going to be that efficient. So I can see an under if the quarterbacks can't sling the way they sling. But I don't think they can stop our run. So it's going to be a fun game. But Rams plus four and a half. All right. Jets. One more thing. What if they're good, though? What if okay, the secondary? What if they are good? If they're good, they're gonna be good. Right, I'm sorry. Both teams are gonna be good. I mean, they're gonna, if, gonna if our defense game. cooks, yeah, this is a good. game to get tested. First Dude. game of the season, you have two dogs you have to go up against. What can you do, corners? I feel like there's just so many question marks in that game. It's like almost better to not bet on it. The problem is it's yep. also week one, so there's already so many question marks in general. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Niners, Jets. Talk about over, a question under, mark. What the over, fuck are the Jets? Over under Aaron Rodgers. You're gonna have to find plays. out. Uh, I think he should be able to play more than three plays in this game. So I'm gonna take the over on that. But we got three and a half. Mo, well, four points. Sorry. There's only two bets for this goddamn game. There's yes, only two bets. Itching. So There's I'm gonna let two. him start. Jets There's Niners. only two bets for this game. Jets Go plus ahead. four or Jets fucking money line. Because San Francisco cannot get it done against this defense. Debo ain't doing all that spicy shit. Kittle, he ain't about to be able to break off for 60 yards because he gets left in a defense that doesn't pay attention. The Jets have always been held back by a quarterback, and unless Aaron Rodgers gets injured again, this revamped O-line can block. They may have not played games together, but all on their own are good O-linemen. I don't see the Jets losing this game. I'm taking Jets money line. Look, I'm fucking riding with Jesse. I'm taking Jets money line too. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to add on top of everything that Jesse said is that Aaron Rodgers is six and, was 6-3 and three with the Packers against the 49ers in regular season games. That man loves playing in San Francisco. Give me the Jets money line. I really want to. I really do. But then every t- but then it's just San Francisco, dude. They got McCaffrey. They got IU too. They have so many fucking weapons. McCaffrey's not a hundred. And their defense is so good too. McCaffrey's not a hundred. But the Jets defense is so okay, good. When has McCaffrey <laughs> really ever been a hundred percent? That man can play on a broken fucking leg and still put up thirty-five fantasy football fucking points. He didn't break his leg, goddammit. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just fucking saying. And I'm just saying, the boys got a calf strain. They I don't even have a car tied to his fucking waist and still have a hell of a game. We know we're gonna play, but I just that defense of the Jets has been so damn good. I, I agree. Game. That's why it's so hard, and that's why it's like then there's Aaron Rodgers, who's always been known to just do his magic fucking shit just to get shit done to win games. But then the 49ers are just so fucking good that you shut down like half their options. They still have two other insane fucking options to go to. I'm done believing in the fucking 49ers. Call I want them. to be. No, fuck it. I don't even know if they're going to win one, this. Week one, until I really see what the Jets are about with Aaron Rodgers, even though I believe it's going to be a really good thing for them, I need to see it. Until until then, I I'm, I mean I'm picking the 49ers this game, bro. Jesse, I told I told you I think a couple weeks ago I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams won this division. So, haven't even mentioned Brees Hall. 
That exactly. man stupid behind a shit O-line with a quarterback you knew wasn't going to be able to throw the ball. And he still played like a dog. Now he yeah. has somebody who can actually make a play action seem like a play action. Mm-hmm. And an O-line. Wow. They're dangerous. I'm going to take it. I'm going to actually switch things up this week and I'm going to take an over. I'm going to give uh, over 43 and a half points. Yeah. Yeah. I just think I, I just, I just think that it's going to end up being a situation of a Monday night football thriller. Just got that feeling. It does have that feeling. All righty. That's all I got. <laughs> that is all. Yeah. I mean, you Stafford. Rico Beard from 97.1 wants you to tell your wife to shut up. <laughs> yeah, please and thank you. <laughs> Fuck off, Kelly. God damn it. <laughs> All um, right, Dylan. Thank you guys for watching the podcast. If you want to check out all that was happening on Saturday and on Sunday, the recap for college NFL will be on Wednesday. Also, campus kickoff will be on Tuesday. Make sure that you guys check us out on the socials at Sharp Sports Network on Instagram, on Twitter, X, YouTube, Twitch. Yes, I know Twitter and X are the same things, but some people still aren't cultured yet. Subscribe like ring the bell for notifications so every time that we go live you guys know what's happening and also for football season today whatever lays you want to fade whatever lays you want to ride make sure that you download the sharps sports app on the app store use promo code tyco 011 you can see all the boys bets up there for what they just broke down here on the podcast and you can do whatever you want with them or you can make your own bets we appreciate you and we hope that you guys sign up Thank you guys for watching the podcast. We will see you guys next week. Enjoy week one of the NFL season. Don't be stupid. Have a good one. I'm McKilly. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, my knee. Sports bettors, you need to download Sharps, the better social network. With Sharps mobile app, you can tell your friends bets with one click. See a bet you like? Just click the whale tail icon and boom, it will open in your corresponding sports book. Sharp securely connects to major sports books like FanDuel, MGM, Caesars, and more. So you can not only track your bets, but share your bets in creative ways. So gather the gens, download Sharps for free, and join our fast-growing sports betting community.